All right, aviators, hello, sky guys, welcome to Project Aviate. Up and away, lesson 10. Brought to you by Project Aviate. I said Project Aviate twice today. We're going to be talking about ground communications, air communications, talking to other pilots and air traffic controllers. Now that we know the airports, layouts, and all the different um, types of air traffic controllers that we have to communicate to. And, okay, thank God. I was just making sure I wasn't talking on frequency right now because. If you've read the title and our emails, we're on VATSIM today, and we're going to talk about all about what VATSIM is right now. As you can see, my flight sim is loading because uh, we were pretty indecisive about what airport to choose today. So unfortunately, uh, because we wanted to talk to some live controllers on VATSIM, uh, we wanted to pick an airport where they have controllers, obviously. And unfortunately, they didn't have any, they didn't have any airports that were included in the X-Plane mobile. Um, yeah, so... Right now, we're going to be flying close to home in the the Bay Area, uh, specifically Oakland. So as you can see from the beautiful faces on the screen where we have Steven, who's on stream right now, and Henry, our honorary officer over at Purdue University, um, we're going to be talking about talking. That's what we're going to spend the lesson on. So now that, um, as I said, like two minutes ago, now that we know the airport, we understand the airport, understand the types of controllers that there are. The system that we have for organizing each other and being able to, to uh, navigate around each other, both on the ground, we have different kinds of taxiways, obviously, different runways, and we need to be able to know how to move around the airport. And obviously, the different types of air traffic controllers, uh, depending on the stage of flight that we're at, such as if we're on the ground, talk to ground controllers if we're in the air we're either talking to tower approach departure controls things like that or when we're really high in altitude specifically above eighteen thousand feet you're talking to center usually so um we're not going to be worrying about center frequency by the way we'll just be worrying about uh everything else so if you remember atis clearance delivery clearance and delivery are the same thing so you have atis clearance ground tower departure approach and we'll just be doing that so uh i'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to calvin to talk a little bit about how do we talk what's the what are some fundamental communications we need to know when we're communicating with others there's a fundamental formula I'll let calvin go over it all right so the uh, formula is pretty simple so there's four main things you want to talk you want to first do who you're talking to second is who you are Number three is where you are at. And number four is what do you want ATP to do? So we have one example. So we have Reed Hillview Ground, which is who you're talking to. November 172 Sierra Papa, which is who you are. On Taxiway Charlie is where you're at. And then what you want is requesting taxi to runway 31 right. right? Example two, you also see the same thing. Who you're talking to in this case is San Francisco Tower. Who you are is United 429. What, where you are is fully short of runway 28 left. And then what you want is you're telling them that you're ready for departure. You want to depart. Yeah, you want to depart, yeah. All right. Uh, we'll be able to... Uh, I'm just connecting to the network right now. So uh, before we go any further, uh, before we actually start the whole talking, we're going to be... We're going to be on VATSIM today. So this is a thing mainly for the desktop flight sims. So we're going to be on the VATSIM network. VATSIM, it, it, I, don't quote me on this, but I feel like it stands for Virtual Air Traffic Simulator. Something along those lines. At least that's what it is. It it's, um, it's a network. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Discord, but for flight simmers oh, so and air traffic control. Uh... Mm-hmm. You are right. It's Virtual Air Traffic Simulation Network. Ah, yeah. So there you go. Virtual Air Traffic Simulation Network. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It simulates uh, air traffic with other pilots and air traffic controllers who are sitting in their homes with computers and looking at fancy ATC radars from home. Like, they'll, they might get a view up here, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, um, and this kind of like Discord allows you to just get on this network and talk using the proper phraseology that Calvin just talked about to other flight simmers, other air traffic controllers. And it's mainly a thing for um, the big desktop flight simulators. So like the one I'm using right now, the one that you see on screen, just kidding, you don't because 
you see the slides right now. Uh, keep forgetting who's there. There you go. So desktop X Plane Eleven. Uh, you also have other flight simulators we might have mentioned before, like Microsoft Flight Sim Twenty Twenty. That's also a thing there. Uh, and prepared, prepare three D as it's called. So it's not on a. It's not on mobile. It's not on X Plane Mobile, unfortunately. But that's okay because this will give you a chance to follow along with us as we talk, so that you're not just being shoved into the real thing really quickly. Because uh, sometimes the people on here get a little, uh, let's say. Uh, sometimes there's pressure to be right. Obviously, they're very helpful. So uh, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, the first thing you want to do, I'm not sure if we mentioned this already, is usually we start with a flight plan. We're not going to go over the specifics of filing a flight plan for right now. We're just going to talk about the communication itself. So as you can see, uh, what we just went over, basic communication skills, who you're talking to, who you are, where you are, and what do you want. So let's see if I have the thing ready. We're just going to start up the plane. You remember the startup procedure. I've already uh, started up the Masters in Avionics. Remember, you get your fuel pump on, prime for three seconds. One, two, three. OK, we pull it out. And fuel pump's coming off. And go to straight to our magnetos. Go start our engines. Wait for it to cough, uh, cough start, I guess. And then mix your rich. Just like that. And make sure when you're starting your engine uh, that your throttle is in a little bit so that fuel is sort of uh, being demanded into the engine like it's not at idle so that the engine doesn't choke. So anyway, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and increase the volume a little bit just to give you an idea of what you might hear on an air traffic control frequency. All right, so those are the people we're going to be talking to. Uh, first thing we're going to do is um, request our clearance to do a VFR traffic pattern. If you remember two lessons ago, we talked about how to fly traffic pattern, a circuit around the airport. We went over all the procedures for that. We're going to do that today, except talking to our traffic controllers. So first thing we want to do, obviously, is request our clearance. And let's follow the formula. Who are we talking to? Oakland ground. We're at Oakland today. Um, unfortunately, there's no clearance frequency on here, so normally we'd be talking to clearance to get this, but for right now, we're going to be talking to ground. And who we are, we are going to be call sign November 172 Papa Papa. And you can usually find this on the, on the back of your airplane. I know it says Sierra Papa over here, but uh, unfortunately, the call sign's taken on VATSIM, so I changed it to Papa Papa. No, sorry about the confusion. Okay, next step in the formula, where you are. Let's see if I can just show it. Maybe minimize slides. There you go. Where you are, we are over at the GA, the General Aviation Ramp, as you can sort of see. We're at the General Aviation Ramp Northeast. Um, you should be able to see your position in X-Plane Mobile as well, where you're starting. And, and finally, what do we want? Clearance to do our VFR flight plans. Let's go. Let's wait for them to be available. direct towards the mid span of San Mateo Bridge. Disregard the rest of that. Oakland Ground, good afternoon. This is November 172, Papa Papa, requesting VFR clearance. 172, Papa Papa, Roger, stand by. All right, we're standing by. 172, Papa Papa. I kind of messed up the call sign. But anyway, he told us to stand by. Bravo. Did that make sense the way I phrased it at that time? Yeah, we're just going to go right to the... Um bridge and uh, everything else is good I got the departure so there's there's often a lot of um, commotion going on on frequency with other planes and stuff so we're gonna have to do a lot of waiting for our turn mm -hmm. all right uh, any day now I suppose something we could do while we're waiting for our clearance is to go over the airport diagram at Oakland Airport because um, we kind of need to know where we're going. Obviously, every airport has different sets of taxiways. And let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. So, uh, oh, should click on that. There you go. So this is the chart at Oakland 
And we're right up here in the general aviation area. Let's get rid of the minimized slides. We're right up here in the general aviation area. We're probably going to do, we're going to do a traffic pattern, obviously. So we're probably going to be given one of these tiny runways right here. Uh, as you can see, the general aviation area is near taxiways Charlie, Echo, Bravo, Alpha. So we'll probably be given taxi instructions using these taxiways. And one, again, one of these runways, either 28 left or 28 right. Remember that these runways are heading 280 approximately. Obviously, there's slight deviations, but approximately speaking, that's the direction that they're facing. Actually, you can see it here. It's like 278.8, but you don't have to worry about the exact numbers usually. This is good enough. So right now we're just waiting for our clearance. Didn't anticipate it would take this long. Should we? We can talk about the next slide. Yeah, maybe we'll go on to the next slide while we're waiting. All right, so there's obviously things you want to take care of while you're talking and things you want to do and not do. So this is the basic Bravo. communication skills that you need to have when talking to uh, ATC. And then there's a few things that you want to keep in mind. So pretty much, uh, say for example, uh, the ADC, uh, air traffic control uh, gives you instructions. Always repeat them back. So repeat all instructions to make okay, sure. Okay, stop. Uh, uh, we're slant golf. That's confirmed. One seven two pop pop pop. All right, we're squawking 3237, departures on 127.2, and now we have ADIS information alpha, 172, pop, pop, pop. 172, pop, 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 read back is correct. Uh, advise ready for taxi, expect runway 28, right? We don't have to read that back, right? If they, so what he just said is that, um, hit, that the readback was correct, uh, there are some numbers in there that he told me to do and some information. We won't have to worry about those. We won't have to worry about those for right now. But he said to advise when ready to taxi and that we're going to expect runway 28 right. So that's the one over here. We see 28 right on our air. Oh, shoot, we don't because we're looking at slides. We have 28 right on our airport diagram. And all we have to do is advise when we're ready to taxi. We're probably going to get some super simple taxi instructions because we're already pretty close to it. And yeah, uh, you're right, you can keep going. Right, so it's pretty easy. So, so definitely read back your instructions. And uh, if, if the ATC asks a question to you, uh, reply using the words affirmative for a yes and negative for a no, instead of using yes or no. Affirmative and negative, they're a little more uh, professional they they sound they're easier to communicate through the radio which you know sometimes the audio quality can be so and so uh it, it's it's it makes it very clear there's it's they're different enough as well and uh another phrase that people often use is wilco which stands for will comply but uh, be careful when using that phrase um because if the uh, the atc asks you a question and not and doesn't actually give you a direct command saying wilco is a little weird so uh generally just follow with here. affirmative or negative and give them a read back i can yes, give Steven, an example here because nikhil uh was told to advise when ready a taxi he could have said wilco on the radio exactly because th that's instructions uh yeah but if it's a question just use affirmative or negative no need to get fancy just tell them what they want to know uh and then uh some things that you don't want to do is ignore atc so if they say your call sign and uh, uh, you're too busy doing something else, reply to them as soon as you can, just right on top of it. Um, uh, and don't expect all your requests to be granted. Say you wanna go into a certain class of airspace, but it's really busy or they have some problem going on, they can't say no. And you know, they, it's very much in their right to say no. And always think of what you wanna say before you key the mic. Uh, don't be standing in the McDonald's line going, uh, so yeah, just think of what you <laughs> want to order. And once you know what your, once you know what your intentions are, then key the mic and then talk to ATC, ask what you want to do or ask what you want them to allow you to do. 
and then follow their instructions and repeat very clearly. Repeat, read back their transmissions very clearly. Yeah, and but some. Yeah, just, yeah. just keep those simple things in mind, and you'll be fine. And something. One thing I want to add. Yeah, you can go ahead first. So the one thing I want to add is uh, the word standby. So both pilots and ATC can use the word standby if Nikhil is busy or if a pilot's busy, and the ATC is giving you instructions. Well, one one you should listen to what the instructions are. And if it's something that you can't do, you either tell them you can't do it or you tell them to stand by. Uh, you shouldn't, pilots shouldn't use standby as much because it's, you know, you're supposed to do whatever ATC tells you to do. <laughs> um, there's not really many cases where you tell them to say standby to them. It's mostly ATC that tells it to you. But uh, in most cases, ATC will say standby. Uh, when they use standby, they're probably doing something else. ATC is multitasking on like a whole nother level. They're probably typing something on the computer. They're talking to you and they're listening to you. Um, and, and in real life, ATC may be working on two different frequencies. Uh, and you know, you guys are watching YouTube video, you guys hear the radio chatter in the background, that's only one frequency. Uh, in real life, ATC can be working two different frequencies, so it's double that communication. And mm -hmm. they are listening to, they could be listening to two different aircrafts talking to the same person at once. So two different aircrafts can be talking to them at once, and they're trying to understand what both of them are trying to say, and they're thinking about a reply for both of them. And so sometimes when you talk, it might you it might seems like they're only talking to you but they're busy they're really busy in the background that's why they say standby mm -hmm. and when they say standby they're basically telling you to wait so when they're telling you to wait you know most of the time you should just wait and not reply to them because one if you're replying they're probably going to speak to someone else first before they speak to you that's how you know task management works um some one person may be ahead of you or more important than you so they're supposed to talk to someone else first so the reason why i told Nikhil to not reply to a standby is because they might he might be taking up airtime for someone else. That's when ATC might be needing to talk to someone else and not him. Mm -hmm. Those are those are good points. And I would say that I'm also relatively new to the <laughs> VATSIM network, so I will also, happily be criticized. Really quiet on the mic. Oh yeah, I just now changed the volumes. I'm super sorry. I, I had changed the volumes for earlier streams. But uh, anyway, so now we're gonna get ready for taxi and I will do better and Probably use Wilco if necessary. Um, so yeah, he said advise ready when ready to taxi. We're ready to taxi. So let's advise them. All right. Once again, follow the formula. Who we're talking to? Oakland Ground. Who we are? November one seven two Papa Papa. A uh, quick note: sometimes uh, controllers and pilots will shorten shorthand their call signs. You don't have to do this if you're a beginner, really. So, but you'll see me do it just to quicken things. So instead of saying the whole November one seven two Papa Papa the entire call sign, sometimes I might just say two Papa Papa, which are the last three characters, or Skyhawk two Papa Papa. Skyhawk is uh, actually sort of the name of the Cessna. It's the Cessna one seventy two Skyhawk, and other planes have their own fancy names associated with them too. So, yeah, don't worry if I shorten those things. And of course, uh, where we are, we don't really need to say that when asking for taxi. They pretty much know where we are, and and uh, where we want to go. Obviously, what do we want to do? We're asking for taxi instructions. So here we go. November one, Bravo. I'll and I just got cut off. Tower one two seven. <laughs> Tower now, Oakland Ground, uh, November 172, Papa Papa, ready for taxi. November 172, Papa ATC Papa, Papa Roger, stand by one moment, I'm uh, coordinating with our local controller real quick. Alright, so as you heard just now, uh, there was one more standby, he is coordinating with a local controller. And this sort of speaks to what Steven was talking about, in that they're often doing a lot of things. They're very busy people. November 2, Papa so. Papa, runway 28 right, taxi via Charlie. Taxi to 28 right via Charlie, and, uh, 2 Papa Papa. So when we're reading back, we read back the instruction and then followed by our call sign. And he gave us, as I expected, very simple taxi instructions. Since we're pretty close to the runway already, let me show you what he said. So if we're looking here on the chart, uh, Taxiway Charlie is right here, and we're actually, our plane is right here as well, so we just have to use Taxiway Charlie. Go down here to where it says 28 right, and hold short there, so don't enter the runway. We don't want to, like, hit any planes that are trying to land or take off or whatever. So anyway, let's start making our way to the runway. And now I'm going to show you how to navigate the airport looking at the 
taxi signs as well. Actually, we have a slide for that. We should probably go over it. <laughs> and yeah, I can have Steven go over taxiing the airport. All right, so common practices while taxiing. So Nikhil already showed you uh, how to taxi with the chart. You basically use the signs on the airport and you follow the chart, you get to where you need to be. Uh, so common practices while taxiing is that you always need clearance to do something. Uh, you guys heard Nikhil request for taxi because ATC asked him to tell uh, when he's ready to taxi. And when he stated that, when Nikhil stated he was ready to taxi, he got clearance, which is to taxi Charlie the 28 right. That's your clearance to do something. Uh, so never enter runways or taxis without clearance or being instructed to. You basically hold short of these runway runways. So holding short means you're holding at an area behind uh, the runway or taxiway. Um, so Nikhil is taxiing up to runway 28 right. He will show us uh, what the hold short bars look like. Mm -hmm. But it is also in the next slide, which I'll, which we will sh switch to in a, in a second. Yeah, uh, uh, once I get there, the I'll next switch slide, that. Okay. Yeah, and the yeah. next slide will also show the movement area, which is also on the next slide. Um, you can go ahead and switch to the next slide right now. Uh, I'll get to hold short line first, and then we'll switch it. Okay. Yeah. So let me. So just... the hold short lines are. So he's he's still taxiing, but you guys notice that there's yellow lines on the taxiways. Like Papa, 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 contact tower one two seven um, point two. And then when he gets to the runway. Well, contact tower causes... one two seven point two. Uh, uh, one seven two. Pop pop pop. Before he crosses into the runway, there is a line that he shouldn't cross without clearance. And he's gonna get this clearance from tower since he was just handed off to tower frequency. This line is not just a, a normal yellow line. It is actually four thick lines. Yeah. Two of them are dashed and the other two are solid. If you are on the dashed side, you can cross to the other side without clearance. But if you're on yeah. the solid side, you cannot cross to the other side without clearance. So, uh, so hold on, really case, quick, really quickly. Um, just to know what taxiway you're on, you'll always see the sign. Remember from last lesson, you'll have the sign with the solid black square and yellow letters. This is usually how it's formatted anyway. Um, telling you the taxiway you're on. So obviously we're on taxiway Charlie heading to 28 right. And this tells us that Bravo is on the right here. So this would be taxiway Bravo right here. And actually, because we're about to get to the runway 28 right, I think we have to turn. Should we turn? Yeah, we'll turn here. And finally, he told us to contact tower. So that's the next step of our controllers that we have to contact who will clear us for takeoff and stuff like that. And I'm going to take care of that before he gets mad at me. <laughs> so, oh yeah, we're here. The hold short line. So Steven, fire away. There it is, the hold short line. You see that two are dashed and two are solid. He's on the solid side, so he's not allowed to cross to the other side without clearance. And he is going to request for clearance uh, in a moment from tower, so go ahead and do that. Yeah. First, let me figure out what <laughs> frequency to contact on departure. 1272. Ah, local controller. Okay. So we'll probably be staying with tower the entire time. So when we're flying traffic patterns, we're usually not flying that far away from the airport. So um, in this case, we're not going to be handed off to a departure frequency, although normally that would be um, the case, but we're staying pretty close to the airport. So the tower frequency, who's mainly responsible for the airport takeoffs and landings, will also be able to control us while we're in the pattern. So now I'm going to contact tower and tell him that we're holding short and that we're ready for takeoff. Oakland Tower, good evening. This is November 172 Papa Papa, holding short of 2A right, ready for takeoff. November 1 Bravo Alpha, proceed direct to San Mateo Bridge so we can have you avoid the San Francisco class Bravo. And the dude right, just... Direct San Mateo Bridge, uh, November 1 Bravo Alpha. Wait, he'll probably talk to me right now. He did just... Last aircraft calling, was that November 172 Papa Papa? Uh, affirmative, that was 172 Papa Papa. November 172 Papa Papa, open tower, good afternoon, sir. Right, make right close traffic, wind 27015, runway 28 right clear for takeoff. Make right close traffic and runway 28 right clear for takeoff, 172 pop pop pop. Alright, so we've been given the taxi clearance and been told to maintain right close traffic. If you remember from the traffic patterns video, there's two types. You can do either a left traffic pattern, so you have your, uh, you can either be circling around the left side of the runway, 
or you can be circling on the right side of the runway. In this case, we've been told to maintain right close traffic, right traffic patterns. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn right after departure. And we're also going to cross the hold short lines because we've been cleared to do so. So obviously, once you're ready for takeoff, remember the lights. Get your landing Good lights one, on. Alpha contact. Three five sixty five one Bravo Alpha. And your strobe lights as well, so land lights and strobe lights are on. And now they're on the runway. Gonna advance our throttles for full power. And of course wait till either fifty five knots or sixty knots. Watch your airspeed indicator. And rotate. Now we're in this now we're in the air. That was pretty fast. And we'll continue a steady climb up to our planned altitude of 1,000 feet. Uh, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't set the altimeter. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, it's a big bad on my part. So I'm gonna... Don't worry about this part. Uh, I just have to... I just have to do this to make sure I'm at the right altitude. Three, zero, one... Too. good enough all right good and remember we can use our pitch trims and all that to make sure uh that we're climbing smoothly so you can see i kind of have to push down in order to maintain a smooth climb so what i'm gonna do is apply some pitch trim down right now and hopefully uh hopefully we don't have to pitch up too much and we kind of just went up like a rocket there for a second and as you can see, we're not being handed off to any other controllers. Normally at this point, we'd be handed off to a departure controller to take us outside of the airport area and assist us with the rest of our departure. But you can see we're um, gonna stick with tower for now. And we've reached our pattern cruising altitude of around a thousand feet. So remember, pull back the throttles to around 2000 RPM and maintain altitude. And he said, right close traffic so we're going to maintain the right traffic pattern uh whoops two my frame rate's dying two eight zero just really fast i have just need to figure out where i'm going okay we're good Oh, weird. I just heading bugged like 280 right there. But it's like slightly off. Oh, that's right. This isn't even aligned. We have to uh, keep. Remember, we have to keep adjusting our um, heading indicator to match up with our magnetic compass. So let's do that once we finish this turn over here. So let's finish this turn over here. Remember the right traffic pattern, we're going to become parallel to the runways. So right about now. And all right, so let's take a look at the compass. The compass tells us, ooh, slightly deviating. So this would be nine zero degrees. So it'd be one zero, well, around 105 degrees. So let's adjust this. Uh, so just really slowly. Uh, check Super again. Always use your checklists. <laughs> uh, are we still at one zero five? Yeah, around one zero five. So that should be good enough. All right, now we're good. And as you can see, remember when we were flying traffic patterns before? Uh, one tip we gave you was to. A heading bug your runway so in this case the runway heading was around 280 and we tuned that in with the heading bug here and since we're on the downwind of the traffic pattern the heading bug will be on the south end of our heading indicator so uh, we're a little below pattern altitude right now so let's make a little climb up to our pattern altitude and pitch trim up because our plane really wants to go down for some reason and at some point, controller will tell us for the controller will tell us when we're okay to go for our down uh, our base to start turning base to finish the traffic pattern and 
come back to the airport. So we'll just have to wait for that. And in the meantime, I have to tell you. Uh, say again for uh, 172 pop up pop. November 172 pop up pop up. Wind 280 at 17. Runway 28 right. Clear for the option. Clear for the option 28 right. 172 pop up pop up. So he's just cleared us for the option, which means we can start turning our base. And Stephen, what were you saying about? Um, well, when you were slowly creeping into the final, if you look at the track. Your your hitting butt wasn't exactly at your six o'clock position. It was oh, like your, okay, okay. Like at your five o'clock. Yeah. Oh, and also you don't need a clearance to start your base turn. Oh, really? Sometimes you can on... be on final without a clearance. Interesting. Sometimes they don't uh... give you clearance. You ask them. Yeah, I've had the my experience with Vatsim is that they tell you uh, when to turn base, which is I guess weird. So I guess in that way it's a little different from the real world. Uh, and obviously, since we're turning base, you want to continue your descent and start busting some flaps. Uh, we turned a little too late. And yeah, as Steven mentioned, <laughs> we went a little bit off course. So now we're a little to the left of the runway because we're supposed to be landing to it right. And so I'm going to continue descending, keeping my speed within the white range so I can continue extending flaps. And of course, watching the poppy lights, aiming for two red, two white, which... We kind of have now, although it's getting a little invisible. So what does clear for the option mean, Steven? I'll have you go over clear for the option. What does that mean? So when you're cleared for the option, that means you can do... There are a couple things you can do. Um, so the, what Nikhil right now is doing, he is practicing um, landings. So he's doing a traffic pattern. So when you're coming into the airport, there's three things that you might be doing. One is that you're coming in because you're practicing landings. Two, you're coming in because you are uh, flying an instrument approach. Uh, we, will, we won't be talking about that much, but when you're flying IFR, so basically when you're flying in the clouds, um, you can't see anything. And there's a, there's a set, there's a chart that tells you what to do. So that's called an approach. It's called an approach chart. Now, when you come in, you could, some people practice those approaches in, in VFR conditions, in clear skies. Um, you can still practice it, but you know, uh, it's not in actual clouds. But what they call is that they call that an approach. Some people don't actually land that actual approach. What they do is they do a low pass over the airport. They'll get to a certain altitude and they'll keep that out. They'll keep holding that altitude, let's say 200 feet above the ground, and then fly over the airport at 200 feet above the ground. Now that's going to be called um, when they clear you for the option. They clear you for that too. So not only do they clear you for it. For what Nikhil is going to probably going to do touch and go. Okay. Uh, so Nikhil has many options. You can do a touch and go, which just means you touch down the runway, you bring your flaps up, you take off again, you go full throttle, take off again without doing a full stop. That's called a touch and go. There is also a stop and go, which is you land on the runway, put your flaps up, you come to a full stop, and then you, after you come to a full stop, you go full power and then you go back up. That's called a stop and go, which is. Uh, only done on a longer runway, unlike Reed Hill View, because your Reed Hill View, your rollout, it's going to take most of the runway, so you can't take off again after you do a stop and go. So I went over touch and go, stop and go, and then so the instrument approach, that's called a low approach, where they fly over the airport at 200 feet. That's called a low approach. They're not going to land. They're not going to do a touch and go. They're just going to fly over the airport at 200 feet. That's going to, that's called a low approach. Um, I'm actually so going to, I'm going to vacate because we're running out of time. Okay, so that's what, so that's oh. what, uh, that's what clearing for the option is. You have many options. You have your touch and go, stop and go. You have your full stop, which is what uh, Nikhil is going to do right now. That's a full stop. That's also an option. Uh, you have your low approach. Um, I think that's it. That's the thing yeah. that you can do with the option, basically. All right. So in the interest of time, we're going to complete the circuit right here. We could have done a touch and go and gone back up to practice patterns, that's what you normally do in flight training. But we're gonna go ahead and vacate the runway onto Taxiway Charlie, or rather, this this part of the taxiway right here is, let's see, Taxiway Golf, as you can see in the solid line. So we're gonna go ahead and tell Tower that we've vacated off Golf right now. 
Uh, Oakland Tower, November 172 Papa Papa, is vacated off Gulf. Uh, ready to taxi to the ramp. November 172 Papa Papa, contact ground 121.75 for your taxi. Good day. Ground 121.75 for taxi, 172 Papa Papa, thank you. So we're going to contact our ground controller once again to get our taxi instructions to the ramp. Uh, Oakland Ground, good evening. This is 172, November 172, Papa Papa, requesting taxi to the ramp, general aviation ramp. November 172, Papa Papa, welcome back. Uh, Oakland Ground, taxi to parking via Charlie. To parking via Charlie, 172, Papa Papa, thank you. So, there you have it. That's the full traffic pattern. We're just going to go back to our parking via taxiway Charlie, which is what we're on right now. Kind of expected that, I guess. If you remember from the airport diagram, uh, it's pretty simple. We got off the runway on taxiway Golf right here, and now we're on taxiway Charlie, just heading to the general aviation area right there. And that completes the traffic pattern. I'm just going to pick a random spot, throw the flaps up, and we're not going to do a shutdown procedure. Are there any other questions we can address, either in the form or in the a live stream chat that we need to address? Uh, live stream looks empty. I'm checking the form right now. Yeah, so I don't know where any of the parking here is So I'm just gonna like pick a place don't do this in real life But I'm just gonna like, you know, just stop my plane like right here, you know, totally totally normal All right, and get rid of our landing lights cuz we're not flying right now strobe lights off and nav lights off and pull out hey, mixture. No questions in the form either. All right. And that's it. That wraps up our traffic pattern lesson on the VATSIM network. So apologies for the confusions and the sudden breaks in right, talking. Here. Oh, let me mute that. So yeah, apologies for all of that. Um, it's a little hard to coordinate between a giant network full of real flight sim people and teach a lesson at the same time. So we do apologize about that, but we hope you learned something a little bit about talking to your traffic controllers. I certainly did. It turns out I make mistakes too. We all make mistakes and we're always learning. And so if you if you if you get into the real world and start flying planes and you start talking to pilots and your traffic controllers, don't worry about your first, well, we can't say don't worry. You'll obviously be nervous, but Obviously, you're going to make mistakes. The phraseology, the formula can get overwhelming. There's all these people talking. and But just take a stab at it, you know, gain experience. And one day, you'll just be able to talk. like the. You'll just be able to go with the flow. And you'll be able to say things very fast. Uh, I, remember, I remember I was flying yesterday night on, on the flight sim. And I was, I suppose... I was trying to show off, but when the controller told me to maintain 300 knots, I kind of said something along the lines of up to 300 knots, United 990, just something like that. You don't have to do that either. So you don't have to like speed run your transmissions either. So don't ever worry about having to do that. Uh, yeah. Any other words from you guys? Well, you shouldn't do that actually. Yeah, you shouldn't yeah. do you're, that. <laughs> you're you're going to get some, you're going to get that one ATC that doesn't have red bull or five hour energy and they're gonna start yelling at you on their radio and just be like i cannot hear what you're saying repeat again mm -hmm. oh uh anish is asking if there's a way to uh talk to atc uh or do a multiplayer thing in x-plane mobile so x-plane does have multiplayer mode it doesn't have an air traffic control mode yet it might come maybe question mark i th i don't quote me on it i thought they were working on something like that but Right now, no, it's not. It's not in the um, X plane Actually, network. Just aside from the the ATC, you know what? I recommend you going onto liveatc.net. Liveat liveatc.net is basically a website chat. where, yeah, it's it's a website where you can hear real life communications right now. Now you can't talk to them, but you can just hear them. It's like a scanning. It's a scanner network. Uh, you just put in the four letter code, let's say KSFO for San Francisco, right? You just go to liveatc.net, you enter in KSFO, uh, find the tower frequency or whatever frequency you want to listen to, and you, you just tune in to it. Yeah. All right. So we hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, 
take some time to digest it. Apologies if it was a little confusing. It's going to be a little hard the first time. Uh, we are nearing the end of the series. We just, this is essentially the end of our content, pretty much. So we've talked about all the procedures, how the Cessna works, the physics behind it, the checklists that we do from startup to taxi takeoff landing and uh, maneuvering our airplane, keeping in mind all of the indications on the six packs, so our heading indicator, altimeter, artificial horizon, and also controlling our plane using, you know, trim, using our pitch trim to maintain a, a stable uh, rate of climb or perhaps maintaining an altitude, things like that. And now we're wrapping that up by talking to other pilots and talking to air traffic controllers. And that's pretty much it. So the only lessons left are pretty much checkpoint lessons. We'll be doing what's called a cross country, meaning doing a little bit of flight planning for a full flight from point A to point B with the whole flows and everything like you just saw today. So yeah, we cannot wait for that. And have a great weekend, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Stay safe, go outside, go plane, go sky gazing as always. See you later. Bye.